Okay, bismillahirrahmanirrahim Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh uh, On this opportunity uh, I would like to uh, Explain to you About what is Critical discourse analysis And this is actually a group a Presentation And then in my group There are me Mas Rianto and then my friend Irfan Suryana and then Vicky dan Tika Nila Okay uh, on this uh, on this content uh, the list of the content uh, there are 12 uh, lists of the contents uh, the first one is definition of CDA or critical discourse analysis and then key, assumption, key assumptions of CDA and then three stages of CDA and then the aims of CDA and then uh, a historical background of CDA then the principle of CDA, then uh, the approach of CDA, and then the main tenets of CDA, and then how to do critical discourse analysis, and then toolkits for CDA, and then criticism of CDA, and then the example of the result of using CDA in English language uh, textbook. And then, and then uh, okay, uh, the first one is the definition of CDA or the critical discourse analysis. Uh, critical discourse analysis, according to Wodak and Mayer at 2001, uh, uh, CDA is a cross discipline set for in early 1990s uh, by a group of <coughs> by a group of scholars such as Theo van Leeuwen and then Gunter Gunter Chris, Ben Van Dyke, and then uh, Norman Fairclaw. And then, uh, according to Bloor at 2007, CBA is an interdisciplinary approach which can be used by professionals from a variety of backgrounds, such as uh, historians, uh, business institution, and then lawyer, politician, and then uh, etc. And then it is to investigate social problems relating to their work. And then, uh, Another opinion, uh, CBA is a methodology that enables a vigorous assessment of what is meant when language is used to describe and explain. And then according to Van Dyke uh, at 2015, uh, critical discourse analysis is a discourse analytical research that primarily studies the way social power abuse and inequo, inequo, in, 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 inequality are enacted, reproduced, legitimate, and then uh, resisted by, by text and talk in the social and political context. And then uh, according to Van Dyke also, uh, in 1993, uh, CDA is obviously not a homogeneous model, nor a school or paradigm, but a more shared perspective on doing linguistic, semiotic, or discourse analysis. And then uh, we move to uh, next content, uh, which is the key assumption of CDA. In the key assumption of CDA, there are uh, three stages. The first one, uh, critical discourse analysis, always adopt an over-political stance. And then the second one, uh, critical discourse analysis, focuses on how the dominant parties maintain their power. And then the third one, scholars who apply the perspective attempt to uncover the ideologies, the ideologies that underpin uh, discourse. And then uh, uh, the next content was uh, three stages of CDA. Uh, like the content said that uh, there are three stages of CDA. The first one, a uh, uh, description stage, which is concerned with the formal properties of the text. So it is uh, uh, like explaining. Uh, what the text mean like that and then uh, interpretation Interpre interpretation concern 
concerned with the relationship between text and interaction and then uh, the third one explanation explanation uh, on explanation it concerned with the relationship between interaction and social content so uh, these three uh, stages they are connect to, connected to uh, with each other and then uh, uh, the next content was the aims of CDA the aim of CDA itself is it is to investigate uh, critically critically social uh, and in inequality as it express signal constitute legitimate and so on by language or this or in discourse that is according to Wodak at 2001 and then uh, the next aims to make uh, transparent and discursive aspect of societal disparities and inequalities according to Mayer also in 2001 and then the next aim is to explore the, the to explore the social function of language and then to describe linguistic process in social terms that reveal the ideology and political investment according to Fairclaw at 1992 and then uh, there are also uh, other uh, the other aims uh, that is to uncover the ideology and the power in discourse by understanding the relationship between textual features and larger social larger social practices and then uh, to explore how conversation and language uh, par par perpetuate social and political inequalities through different uh, strategies, tactics, and structure. Okay, that is all uh, from me. And my friend Vicky Hidantikanila will continue this presentation. Thank you so much for the opportunity all right guys let's talk about the next point that will be explained by me the next point is contained about four point the first and uh, the fourth point is talking about a brief historical background of cda and the fifth point is talking about the principle of cda the sixth point is talking about approach of cda and the seven up uh, and the seventh point is talking about the maintenance of cda Okay, we'll talk about a brief historical background of CDA first. The first point is uh, critical linguistic was developed in East Anglia during the 90 and 70 by a number of by a number of scholar led by Fowler. All right, for the second, the scholar who include others names such as Chris. Hodge and True were concerned to develop a societal approach to linguistic, which recognized power relationship as a central theoretic issue and text its main unit of analysis by Chris 90 and 89. Okay, the third, Woodock says, uh, Woodock 201 says that CDA emerged and has developed science since the early 90 and 19. 19 and 90 following a small symposium in Amsterdam with the with help of the University of Amsterdam For the next point a group of CDA scholar including Toon van Dijk, Norman van Koon, Kader Chris, Theo van Leeuwen and Ruth Woodak exchanged view and discussed different approach of CDA for two, two days each of these pioneers of the field has left his or her mark on CDA by journals, studies, and books, each of which has introduced new approach and concern in CDA that have contributed to establishing CDA as a paradig 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 paradigma in a linguistic. Right, for the next is talking about principle of CDA. The principle of CDA is consists about four points. The first point is 
uh, social and political issues are contributed and reflected in discourse. The second one is power relations are negotiated and performed through discourse. The third discourse both reflect and reproduce so- social relations. The fourth is ideologies are produced and reflected in the in the use of discourse. Right. Next for approach of CDA. Approach of CDA is consists of consists for two points. The first is fair fair good sociocultural approach. Fair code system of discourse analysis analysis sorry has three dimensions. For one for the first dimension is a text spoken or written including visual image. The second dimension is a um, a discourse a discourse practice pro- productions consumptions and distributions of the of the text. And the third dimension is a social culture practice. Next, for the second one is three dimensions framework for the anal- analysis of text and discourse. The first is the linguistic descriptions of the formal properties of the text. Second one is the interpretations of the relationship between the discursive process and interactions and the text. And the finally, the explanation of the of the relationship between discourse and social and cultural reality. So next, the maintenance of CDA. This is the maintenance of CDA consists about eight point. The first point is CDA address social problem. The second one is power relations are discursive. The third is uh, discourse. Discourse contributes con- the discourse country constitutes society and culture. The fourth is discourse does ideologies were the five the fifth is discourse is historical the sixth is the link between the text and society is mediate the seven is uh, discourse analysis and analy- discourse analysis is interpret interpretative and explanatory the last is discourse is a form of social actions so it says it so all of that it says by fair code and budak uh, 19 and 97 all right for the next presentations will be present by Irfan Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh hello everyone how are you today I hope you are all fine in this beautiful moment let me introduce myself my name is Irfan Suryana and you can call me Irfan here I am going to continue the presentation uh, it's of course still about political discuss analysis. After you got the information regarding the topic from Mas Asrianto and Mbak Vicky Hidati Karnila, I'm going to deliver new materials uh, for you that it still relates to the topic. Actually, there are four new materials related to the topic that I'm going to deliver. First is about how to do critical discuss analysis. Uh, second is toolkits for critical discourse analysis. The third is criticism of critical discourse analysis. And the last one is the example of the result of using critical discourse analysis in ELT textbook. Well, everyone, let's start to uh, the first material. It's about how to do critical discourse analysis. Everyone, have you known about the ways how to do critical discourse analysis? If you haven't, please stay tuned in this uh, broadcast. How to do critical discourse analysis? The discourse analyze should detail how such forms of inequality are expressed, enacted, legitimated, and reproduced by text and talk. Uh, and then, uh, frankly, there are several aspects that become a guide to question on text analysis. The first aspect is called as transitivity. 
and it consists of many questions like what patterns of transitivity are found who is depicted as agent and over whom what is the degree of normalization how does it background the process is set by omitting information about agents of power do passive verbs also delete agents of power and the last question what is the ideological function and then let's move the second aspect is known as mood and modality and what are the questions in this aspect perhaps you are curious regarding the question well i will tell you the first question is how is mood enacted declarative imperative or interrogative and the last which values express choices of modality the third aspect is called as vocabulary in this vocabulary aspect uh, there are some questions as well for example how are words used to show ideology what aspect of reality are overworded how are overworded synonymy antonymy hyponymy used to construct ideology are there a permissum or metaphors and the last question in this vocabulary aspect what connotation do they convey let's move and another aspect is called inter interactional control features and perhaps you are wondering again what uh, are the questions in this aspect well i will tell you again the questions are which are the interactional cultural features of the text turn taking control of topics topic chain or opening and closing of interaction and in this uh in this aspect uh the question is only one and the five aspect is known as topicality topicality and the question can be which topics are chosen to fill team position in the clause or which are foregrounded and another aspect is called as presupposition and the questions can be are there presuppositions or assumptions made by a speaker or writer which are not explicitly stated and which the author appears to take for granted and another aspect is called as fejuness and the questions can be which expressions are unclear because they do not give enough information or they do not say exactly what they mean and uh, implication aspect the question can be which implicit information can be deduced or inferred from this course on the basis of pragmatic context okay here are the other ways uh, how to do the discourse critical discourse analysis the discourse analysis should remind that critical discourse analysis includes not only a description and interpretation of discourse in context but also offers an explanation of why and how discourses work and the, they should know that critical discourse analysis my comments by deciding what discourse types or genre of the text and also they should know about the analysis that may consider the framing of the text and the last thing that they should know uh, how to do about how to do the discourse analysis is Critical discourse analysis takes us beyond the level of discussion to a deeper understanding of the text. And welcome to the second material that I'm going to deliver, the deliver for you. And it's about toolkits for critical discourse analysis. Okay, various practitioners have presented toolkits for doing critical discourse analysis. Although 
the term doesn't na- doesn't sound scientific, but it fits its use and purposes. And according to Fire Cloak Fungic and all, uh, there are several tools kits that they uh, present. For example, word order, lexical style, coherence, topic choice, speech act, rhetorical figures, syntactic structures, turn taking, strip pairs, and hesitation. And the last three items, which are turn taking, repairs, and hesitation, hesitation are to do with spoken discourse. So they do not uh, deal with written discourse. Well, uh, the third material that I'm going to explain to you is about criticism of critical discourse analysis. So it's about the criticism from the other experts about critical discourse analysis. And here we go. Because of too much theory and global contextualization, critical discourse analysis practitioners have a tendency to make their analysis too complex. Analysis can be too difficult to comprehend because it is too complex. So. Uh, the analysis uh, is uh, regarded as the difficult thing to do because it's uh, too complex uh, of the of the analysis or it may focus on texts which do not require this construction because they are very obvious in the prejudice there seem to be no solution to the division between sophistication as opposed to simplicity in the analysis unless by the use of diverse approaches. So the only way uh, in this criticism about critical discourse analysis is to use different approaches or method more or less like that. And the last material that I'm going to tell you is about the example of the results of using critical discourse analysis in ELT textbooks. So uh, in this material, uh, is uh, I regard this as an important material as well because it uh, show about the example of using critical discourse analysis in ELT textbooks. Frankly or honestly, we found many examples about using critical discourse analysis all, uh, in ELT textbooks from many sources such as journals uh, and then the other sources. But uh, we choose uh, which is just only one uh, source uh, that show regarding the example. So uh, it was taken from a journal article. The title, uh, the title of this journal article is The Representation of Multicultural Values in the Indonesian Ministry of Education and Culture and there's EFL textbook. A critical discourse analysis that's for the title and the researchers who try to observe this kind of research are a Buddhist Tiana and Handoyo Puji Widodo so they are the researchers and this artic- uh, journal article and this uh, journal article is new because it was published in March, first March, uh, 2019. So it is regarded as new article. So it can be a search for you if you want to uh, take a deeper information or uh, analysis regarding uh, regarding the topic that we deliver for you. Okay, and the I'm on a day research is to investigate multicultural values represented in the AFL textbook geared for senior high school students. So that's the time to investigate uh, multicultural values. So in this context, it's multicultural values. 
So here the result uh, I'm going to tell you the findings of this study reveal that four themes of multicultural values emerge from textbook. So they found uh, several multicultural values. It is a uh, it is uh, known as just for multicultural multicultural values. These multi multicultural values are respect for cultures of different ethnic and religious groups, respect for the cultures of indigenous people, conflict avoidance and peace with all forms of life and nature, and the last or four, uh, the multicultural culture that uh, is found in this uh, in the te textbook is appreciation of creative cultural products so uh, that's all that we delivered about the topic uh, I assume that the topic is really interesting because it's about critical discourse analysis and if you have any questions comments suggestion or some sort please do not hesitate, hesitate because uh, you can uh, write down on the comment uh, in my channel in the YouTube channel okay and uh, we hope that we can meet again in the class and uh, Mas Aslianto, Mbak Vicky and I uh, just want to say that thank you very much for watching this video and uh, we do hope that uh, you could get uh, some benefits or advantages from this video uh, especially regarding the critical discourse analysis and once again thank you very much and we close this presentation by saying Alhamdulillahirrabbilalamin and Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Have a nice day and happy testing Thank you